Richard Clarida, welcome back. Good to great see to, you. Great to see you, Sarah. So you know this man, the Fed chair, very well. Yeah. What did you make of his remarks yesterday? Well, you know, the press conference was a different situation than the opening statement from the FOMC that they vote on. In fact, I was quite surprised at the opening uh, FOMC statement in the sense that it teed up a pause based upon having done a lot, they long lags. and durable lags to monetary policy. Uh, quite frankly, very dovish and more dovish than I expected, because I agree with the chair, they have a ways to go. The press conference set a completely different tone. I think some would say hawkish. I would say realistic, given what they need uh, to do. So I thought it was a very good press conference for the chair to really clarify, at least the way he sees where the economy is going and what, what the Fed needs to do. Do you think that was by design, that there was, that there was a contradictory message? in the statement and then the news conference? Well, what I would say is I came into the meeting, Sarah, expecting very little change to the statement, and I was not alone. You know, there are no dots at this meeting, uh, but instead we got a pretty substantial change in the statement, and then he spent a lot of time in the press conference uh, at least giving his own perspective on what it meant to him. So, yeah, a bit of a surprise. So we, so we're, we're, we watch the Fed Fund's futures, and we can see that you know, they've been, the market expects 50 in terms of basis point yeah. hikes in December, 25 after that. But here's the outlook, you know, peaking up more than 5 percent in January yeah. 23. Do you think that's realistic? I, I don't. I do think that they eventually may get the funds rate up to 5 percent. I don't think it'll happen uh, in January. I think what the chair wanted to do yesterday that he accomplished is he wants the ability to, you know, get off the train of 75 dip a meeting to tee up the ability to do 50 in December, and they've done that. But importantly, he did not want the markets to misread that for an early pause. In fact, he really pushed back against that. So I do think eventually the funds rate's probably going to go somewhere around 5%, uh, and then beyond that will depend on the inflation data. So when do they pause? <laughs> My best guess now, it will be data-dependent to some extent, uh, is probably at the March meeting. Uh, I think that they think they're going to pause earlier next year. That's what the SEP would, would indicate. When, did, when, when do they ease? When do they ease? Well, the other thing, Sarah, that he did is he made it very clear that they're going to have to keep policy at a restrictive level for some time. So obviously, the way the economy evolves may influence that. But I think they think they're going to keep rates at that level for some time, perhaps throughout much of next year. A lot of this jibes with where the market is pricing. Yeah. Right? So do you think we're reaching a level of peak yields? I think so. I think that would be my baseline case right now. I think they think they've done enough, or at least by the spring they will have done enough, to put policy into a restrictive place. And with the combination of the financial tightening and financial conditions and the slowing economy, they think inflation will start to come down and that'll be uh, enough. So I do think that would be my baseline. Unfortunately, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong in the other direction. They're going to have to go higher. But I do think that it's a reasonable view that they could be done in the spring. What do you expect for jobs tomorrow? I think the job market is still showing amazing resilience given amazing. the slowdown in the economy. Uh, jobs do tend to be a lagging indicator. I would expect something perhaps around 200,000 uh, tomorrow, but I uh, haven't really focused on it a lot recently. Do you think that the Fed, is that what the Fed is targeting, wages? Oh, well, no. They're tar the Fed's targeting inflation. The Fed likes it when people get a big raise so long as it doesn't push up prices. The problem now is that wage inflation is running about a couple percentage points faster than consistent with the, with the inflation target. So, yes, the labor market is going to have to adjust, and that may be uh, through unemployment, participation, or vacancies. I guess what I'm wondering is how much the economy is going to suffer as a result yeah. of... We've got now four 75 basis point hikes yes. in a row yeah. and, and a bunch more, even, even smaller hikes. It's a lot of tightening in a short period. What yeah. that's going to do to our economy in 23? Well, the, the aim is clearly to slow the economy, to reduce economic growth, and I think it will succeed. The challenge will be, does it push the economy into a sustained recession? Um, that could happen. It doesn't necessarily have to be a severe recession, but... The idea that you can operate close to zero and avoid negative is probably going to be hard to accomplish. And, and the chair himself acknowledged that yesterday. He said, you know, the, the window for uh, a soft landing uh, is, uh, is, is, is closing, or at least it's, it's not as open as it was. Maybe